Can you guys see my screen? Yes, I see thumbs up. Good. Oh, and I think it's time as well. It's uh, four here in Portugal. And it's time for the product update of March 7. So I'm going to keep it really short uh, this time because I wanted to give all the space to the most important thing in the world, uh, which is uh, GitLab.9. Uh, and uh, March 7 is, uh, is a special date because today is the, is the free. So uh, that means that today in the background, you'll hear my dog coughing. It's, it's very sad. He has a cough. Um, on the 7th, we have the feature free. So basically on the 7th, everything has to be done that we want to have done on that release. And March 7th in particular is special because it's done for 9.0. Uh, so it means that tomorrow, uh, nothing will be merged into the master branch of GitLab anymore and we'll start making the first release candidate. So we have a very good idea what is going to ship. Although not everything that I will say today here uh, will be promised to actually ship because we still have until the end of the day. So on that note, let's talk about 9.0. March 22nd will release 9.0, the latest GitLab release and the first major release in almost 16, 17 months. It's a very long time and uh, hopefully a, a shorter time next time, uh, but it's a big deal. So what, what, what are we going to ship in GitLab 9? The first and most important thing, uh, and I think maybe the most important thing that we've shipped in a very long time since merging CI is subgroups. So subgroups allow you to have multiple nested groups. Uh, and that means that traditionally we have now GitLab org is the group, and then you have, for instance, the project GitLab C that you see there. But what this allows you to do is have multiple groups in, inside of each other, like folders or your computer. So you can have GitLab, and then in that you can have a group called Community Edition. In that you can have a project called Backend, for instance. Or you could imagine that you have, for instance, a group inside of the GitLab group called website, inside of that one one in blog, and then a specific project for the articles. And this is a really big deal because if you have very big projects, they don't typically exist from a single project. They don't exist out of a single repository. Even GitLab itself, the core of GitLab, GitLab Community Edition is a single repository, but many of the components of GitLab are in separate repositories. And it makes much more sense if you're able to nest them like this, if you can put them in a logical order, in a logical structure. Even more so, this allows you to easily give the correct access to the right people. So if you have a, a very large project, let's say you build an operating system, you don't want to give everyone access to every single piece of the code. And by having these nested groups, it makes it much easier to define it. You can, for instance, say, everyone has access, read access to everything, but only write access to particular parts. And it's easier to manage when you have it like this. One example in particular are Android repositories. So you know Android, the mobile operating system. Um, if a lot of big companies are actually building on top of this or they're forking this. For instance, you know that uh, if you buy a Samsung a telephone, you have not just stock Android on that, like you get with Google's phones, but you have Android with a few changes. So a lot of organizations are doing this and Android notoriously consists of many different repositories that are nested inside of each other and they created a custom tool to be able to stitch those together. Now, that meant that they are not able to use GitLab or any of its competitors until March 22nd because from that moment forward, they can actually use GitLab. So you can actually have 25 levels deep of subgroups uh, before GitLab says, okay, no more. Uh, which is enough to, to host the Android repository. Interestingly, no one else is doing this. So if you are looking for a Git hosting solution where you can have multiple groups inside of groups, inside of groups, GitLab is the only one that can do this. Super big news, super, super big news. So this is a really big deal and I'm really excited uh, about it. Next thing, we're improving issue boards and we've been redo doing this very consistently the past few releases. Um, and this one is bringing a very big deal, having the ability to actually reorder cards. So issue boards, as you know, consist of multiple lists. And until, until March 22nd, you're not able to reorder those and maintain the order of the cards. And you will be able to do that now. Uh, and in Enterprise Edition Starter, will allow you to associate a particular milestone to a particular issue board. And that allows you to use issue boards in a more traditional sense. So in a traditional sense, you have a sprint. Um, 
this is how many people use Jira, for instance. You have a sprint where you say, this is what we're going to do this week, and it moves to certain stages. And in GitLab, you are now able to use a milestone to that goal. And you can have a very traditional type of, um, of issue board, of, of Kanban board, as they say. What else? Uh, we're bringing deploy boards to Enterprise Edition Premium. And deploy boards is a really cool feature that allows you to see how your deployment of a new change as you deploy to a particular environment progresses over all the different nodes. So in, you know, in modern systems, it's not just a single node that you're deploying to, but you're deploying to the whole bunch of servers or better, you're deploying to a whole bunch of containers, usually managed by something like Kubernetes. And with deploy board, you can actually see how your deployments are progressing over that whole cluster. Very cool feature. Then, uh, and this is a mock-up screenshot, so I'm not sure if this is actually how it's going to look, but um, as you should know, we've been bringing Prometheus to GitLab. And Prometheus is a monitoring solution. It's very elegantly designed, and it allows you to monitor all sorts of things. But primarily, you can monitor like performance, like how is your system performing? What is your system doing right now? And we already brought it to GitLab with a previous release. And what we're going to do now is that if you are using GitLab at all, we'll enable it by default and we'll tell you in the environment whether what, what the status of that environment is. So you can see certain kind of metrics about your systems. Also um, in 9.0, we give you the ability to export issues. And this comes to Enterprise Edition Starter and it allows you to if you have a whole bunch of issues, simply export them as like a CSV or like a Excel format. It's very useful if you want to do some custom Excel stuff with issues. It's, it's something people want. And on that point, GitLab 9.0 is the biggest release we ever did. So I, I just, yeah, I took these features and I wanted to highlight them because I think they're all a very, very big deal. But Besides them, there are many other features that we included in GitLab 9.0, an incredible amount of performance improvements as well, a lot of small improvements, like improvements to ID to production and edit, making a few things just, just that little bit better. We're doing a whole bunch of UX updates. For instance, the merge request uh, window will be a little bit better. And it's just such a big release. And bringing subgroups to GitLab is such a big deal. It's hard for me to express, even with my excitement, how big of a deal this is. And I want you all to share in this enjoyment. And I want you all to share this with everyone and bring, uh, bring out the word because it's such a big deal. Um, but as is my job, I have to always be looking forward. So, and what I am looking forward to now, now that we basically finished 9.0, is uh, GitLab 9.1, because that's how it goes. So on April 22nd, we're releasing GitLab 9.1. Uh, and as always, it will probably be a slightly better than 9.0, no matter how good that release is. Uh, and a few things that we're doing. We're bringing multiple assignees for issues, uh, which is something that some of the competition is doing. And some, uh, a lot of people actually really want this. And it simply allows you to have multiple assignees for an issue, so you can say, it's not just Job that should be doing this, but it's uh, Job and Sean, for instance, have to do this. We're also working on, and this was initially planned for 9.0, but we thought oh, 9.0 is so full, we can't possibly put this in anymore. Uh, we're working on Surface Desk. And Surface Desk is a very cool feature that allows you to basically do support straight from GitLab. Uh, what that means is that if you have some support address, like we have support at GitLab, what you can do is you can point that email address to GitLab, and then whenever a customer emails you at that address, it creates an issue. And if you then are a user in that GitLab instance, you can reply directly to that customer's issue from within GitLab. So you just reply, you, 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 create, you get an issue that says, the customer says, oh, I want this and this and this, or this is not working. You can just reply to the issue like you would do normally, and they get an email back, and you can, Navigate like this, and you can do things like have private comments. It's an incredibly powerful idea to just eliminate all of support software and just do it in the same place that you're doing development. I think it's an incredibly cool, cool idea, and the first iteration will ship with Enterprise Edition Premium in 9.1, hopefully. And 
we're also working, and this is uh, probably, besides GitLab itself, one of the longest running projects within GitLab, but it seems that for 9.1, we're on, on schedule to, to ship this, a highly available package product. So that means that you can have highly available GitLab straight from the package, straight from when you install it. And that means that we pre-configure, for instance, a highly available uh, database for you. Uh, and that's also shipped with Enterprise Edition Premium. Another cool feature uh, that we're working on, and uh, I, by now I'm feeling like I'm starting to overwhelm you with the awesomeness, so this is also one of the last ones, is uh, Canary Deploys. And a Canary Deploy is a really cool concept where, you know, instead of saying, I'm gonna, I have this change, and I deploy it on my server, see if they break, and otherwise I reroll them really uh, quickly, I just deploy to one of my nodes, or to a subset of my nodes, see if they are working well, and if yes, then I deploy to the rest of the cluster. I really like this idea. It's a, a really powerful idea, and uh, I think the canary comes from the fact that you went into the mines, you had a canary, and if the canary fell off, you have to quickly get out because he's more sensitive to toxic air than you are. Um, so a little, little, little deployment, see if it falls down, and otherwise you move forward. And then I think this is the last one, uh, maybe second to last one, burn down charts. This one, is a, it's a nice design by Pedro. It has been in the working for a while. And it basically allows you to see how much am I on track in the current milestone. So I have a number of issues. If I were to take, and I have a certain due date for this milestone, if I were to draw a linear line from today until the due date, descending the amount of issues that I still have to complete or the, or the weight that I gave the issues, how am I on track with that? And you see whether you're ahead of schedule or behind schedule whether the green line in this case is above or below uh, the dotted line. And this will come in Enterprise Edition Starter. And then this is last, and I will never fail to mention this. ID to production, the idea that bring, starting with just an idea and actually building that and shipping that to something that is live and that is running somewhere and making that easy to do is is the ultimate realization of what GitLab is supposed to be. So making it easier, removing small hurdles, small thresholds to move between steps from going from ID to production, whether it is you know, making it easier to deploy or making it easier to make an issue, every single one of those steps, we should be continuously improving. And we have done a number of those improvements in 9.0 and in 9.1, we have a whole more uh, that we're gonna add. And a few of those are, you will be able to create a work in progress merge request straight from the issue page. So that the threshold, the step from going from an issue to having some sort of code or having a, a place where the code will be is basically one click. We will make it easier to navigate from and to the terminal so that if you want to try something out, if you want to poke around in an environment, that's easier to do. If you want to you know, quickly get started and use a template, we'll make that easier to do. We'll make it so easy that before you even have configured your project or when you are creating your project, you will already have the templates to automatically deploy. We'll improve the MetaMost integration. For instance, that if you create a group inside of GitLab, automatically in MetaMost, a group is created. So that if I'm, uh, if I'm interested in building something, then immediately in MetaMost, the people that I have involved in this project are there as well. And even cooler, automatically configuring Kubernetes for a project so that I don't even have to think anymore about this GitLab CI YAML. No, it just comes and it works as it's supposed to be. So these are all very cool things, uh, some of which will land in 91, some of which will decide to do differently or move to another release. But uh, that is just to give you a small peek into the cool things we're doing in the future. And uh, with that, are there any questions? I should do the thing with the timer of 20 seconds. Uh, oh, there's a chat here as well. All right, I'll start at the bottom. Uh, Sid asks, will we detail the performance improvements and all the improvements since 8.0 in the blog post? And the answer is yes, and not just because you're my boss. How soon after burndown charge will GAN charge be implemented as rep? We don't know. So we don't uh, plan very far in advance. We don't have any 
very concrete plans for Gantt charts. It's, it's kind of hard to do how big of, big of a win is that compared to other things that we might have to do, but it's definitely interesting. And we know that someone created the community uh, version for that, something to, to consider. Can I share these slides with Oracle? Yes, you can. Um, you can also share another summary of 9.0. We'll have the blog post up soon. Uh, da -da. Gantt can be EE. Yes, of course. Uh, what am I not excited about? <laughs> I'm excited about everything that's good. Let's see, what else? Da -da. Uh, will we be dog fooding the service desk and move away from Zendesk? Well, you know, tools like Zendesk are very complex and there's hundreds of engineers working on those kind of tools. And I believe we lose many of the features. So I, I, I do hope that we find a use case on its very inception and we should. Dog fooding is always a good way forward. But to say that we'll be moving immediately away from Zendesk would be a little bit early. But I, I, I do hope that that is something that we can, uh, we can do in the, in the future. Uh, okay, back to the bottom. Okay, I think that was everything. Now, now I will give you 20 seconds to ask, ask a question. Actually, Jörg, I have a uh, quick question about the GODR alpha release. I think it is for 9.0. Um, mm -hmm. Is it, uh, I, I, lost, I lost track of it. Is that indeed an alpha release for 9.0? Uh, I believe so. I believe it's still on track uh, uh, as an initial alpha. But it doesn't mean that, you know, it's not yet easy to use. Uh, we have to do a lot of improvements there. And as an alpha, it's not fully stable yet. But uh, we'll make sure to detail exactly in the blog post what the current status is and how that's going to look. And also as an F FYI, because we have this feature freeze on the seventh of the month, that means that tomorrow, and I've heard from PMs that are already working, but in theory tomorrow we'll be starting and doing most of the blog post already. And each PM will be writing their parts of the blog post. And I'll make sure to share this in the team call as well. So if you want to get a full overview of what's actually shipping, all the details, uh, you'll be able to see that on a very, very short term. Besides this presentation, of course. Cool, thank you. So Phil asks, can clients integrate their existing service desk vendor with this new offering or would they simply not use the service desk option? Um, so if you're using some other kind of support system, the idea is that this replaces that in the long term. In the short term, can they integrate it? Unless we have an existing integration with GitLab with this, then uh, Otherwise, no, no, it, it wouldn't be possible. Of course, you can use GitLab API to build all sorts of things. And it's definitely something we should consider, right? Making it easy for people to transition between tools is one of the things that we're quite good at. We have really nice importers for various systems. Um, so it's something we can consider, but it's very early days, right? First iteration, we always keep it simple. So we ship first, uh, first iteration of service desk, and then we'll see what is next and what is the next logical move and how people are using it actually. Thanks, Yap. Yeah, and I was just uh, wondering, you know, what would the migration look like if they're already using Zendesk? They would have to just straight get off Zendesk and come to, to our service. And is, is this product big enough to compete against a Zendesk, right? That, that, that type of thing. Yeah, no, th those are really great questions. Obviously, we won't be able to compete with a, with, a, with a service that has been made for many, many years with a single feature that we've made in a month. So uh, it, it will take a, a, quite a long time before we can say, well, we are competing one-on-one -on -one with services like this. Uh, on the so on the short term, no, and, and, and there won't be anything, but it will already be useful and there will be use cases where people will say, well, I don't need this heavy handed approach of using Zendesk, which has uh, several other setbacks and I can just use this very lightweight alternative. Uh, and on the long, long term, we'll see, maybe it makes sense to, to have some sort of migration path. Um, it, it all depends on how the market responds and how we are continuing iterating on this. And I, I wouldn't dare to predict the future uh, without any data. Uh, all right. Any other questions? Quite, quite a few questions. Oh, Ryan asked, 
do a lot of people use MetaMost with GitLab? It doesn't seem to come up that often for me in conversation. So the chat market is a very interesting market, right? There's many offerings, but most of them are commercial, uh, like Slack that we use ourselves. There has to be a place for an open source alternative. And one of the things that we're doing is we're pushing that open source alternative with GitLab itself, right? So many of the things that we do, like the chat ops kind of stuff that we built, it works across MetaMost and Slack and Microsoft Teams, for instance, in the near future. Um, but to do this very integrated out of the box experience, the kind of things that we do with GitLab, we wouldn't be able to do that if we were to use a paid uh, solution. So that's, that's one of the reasons why we choose to use MetaMost. And it's good that there's an open source alternative to the, to the commercially available chat clients. Um, let's see, did I miss any more? All right, no more questions, three, two, one. All right, I'll see you all in the team call. Thank you for listening.